Hi, this is Nick Astor with TriplePundit.com. I'm here with Peter Nielsen. He is an executive vice president at Novozymes, uh, which is a company that we've gotten to know a little bit better over the last uh, couple months, uh, specifically concerning enzymes and their role in the production of biofuels. Mm -hmm. um, Peter, I'm hoping you could just step us back a little bit. Uh, tell us why are enzymes important in biofuel production? Well, it's kind of the key, I would say. So, so what most uh, biofuel companies are doing is that they do a gr that dry grind of the, of the corn, so they end up with the slurry like a porridge, like a morning porridge. And then uh, you need to break down these, uh, the starch in that porridge. And that's where the enzymes get to play. So there are class typically there are two different enzyme systems, uh, one that uh, kind of cuts it into larger pieces but smaller than the starch, and then one that cuts it down to the individual molecules of glucose. Mm -hmm. So corn is full of starch. The enzymes break it down into glucose and what else? Uh, well, mostly into glucose, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, the glucose is fermented into ethanol, like a beer brew. Um, so you go from corn, you mill it, you, most people will cook it, enzymes will uh, take it apart, and then the uh, glucose molecules would, will be turned into ethanol. The rest of the corn then goes through the process and becomes feed. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you mean by feed? Well, that's the, uh, the DGGS, which is a, uh, the protein part of the corn, which is the, the corn gluten, that is then uh, turned back to farmers for, uh, for animal feed. It's very rich in protein and some starch still. Mm -hmm. So we're reusing the whole crop. What, what are the advantages of corn over other uh, biofuel stocks? Well, the, the corn is easy to work with, uh, and there's a lot of it. Uh, so, but corn and wheat is about the same, but, but corn is easier to work with than wheat and, and less expensive. Now, speaking of corn, I understand you've recently made an announcement that you have a new enzyme that has greatly improved the efficiency by which a farmer might turn that corn into biofuels. Can you tell us about this new development? Well, that's true. Uh, the, uh, we spend about 14% of our turnover on uh, research. So uh, what's in these uh, fuel ethanol plants in the Midwest is actually some of the most modern, fascinating biotechnology of this world. And today we just announced that we're bringing yet another step, uh, yet another f uh, new concept into that world, uh, which is one of increasing the yield of, uh, of uh, glucose out of corn. So uh, what, what this will mean to uh, uh, fuel ethanol plants is that they can save about 2.5% of their corn, which is quite phenomenal. Mm -hmm. uh, so 2.5% uh, means about 3 million tons in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, on, on the current U.S. Uh, fuel production. Mm -hmm. And what's next for Novozymes? Well, that we are in a number of business areas, and, and uh, the, the kind of the fun part about working in Novozymes is that it's never totally predictable. Uh, innovation will take us in different avenues, but certainly in the fuel area, we're looking at uh, further increasing yield, and then we have a very big bet uh, on cellulosic ethanol. Mm -hmm. So we are developing the enzyme systems for cellulosic ethanol. Now, in the long run, do you see cellulosic ethanol being uh, as important as corn, more important than corn? Uh, where are we going with that? Well, I, th I think the very long run, cellulosic ethanol is it. Uh, corn is, uh, is a good start, and corn will stay there. Uh, but uh, in order to really substitute significant amounts of, uh, of gasoline, you need to go to cellulose. So there's a lot of reports out there suggesting that there's, there's plenty of biomass in the world and you can easily substitute about 25% of gasoline. You might be able to go higher than that. But that's really about taking uh, all the, I mean, all the cellulose of the plant and not just the grain itself. So if you look at a stalk of corn, then uh, uh, think about the grains, which is just a very small part of it, uh, which is the current ethanol business. Mm -hmm. The rest of it, the rest of the stalk, the cup, everything, that's the cellulose business. So best case, 25, maybe 30% in the future, uh, where are we now, and how close are we to that goal? Well, the U.S. is at 10% is at today, uh, and the uh, renewable fuel standard has an ambition of about 20-25% uh, in 2022, uh, which is a very aggressive target, and the industry is uh, scrambling to get there. Uh, the rest of the, of the world is behind, with the exception of Brazil. The rest of the world is behind. Uh, but if you look at global fuel, global gasoline consumption, then about 25% can easily be substituted with cellulose. Peter, thanks very much for your time. Thank you.